Mr. Shirk, thank you for having us. If you sit back and have time to reflect, four days have passed since the protest. What would you say we have learned? Okay, um, let me first start off with the tragic events that occurred should not have occurred. That's the first thing I, I tell you. There should not be uh, two young people dead right now. Um, but let me start off with the first thing we learned. And I'll get into a total picture. Uh, first is it would have been uh, in everyone's best interest if we had a demonstration that followed the law. If, if uh, this is a democratic society, uh, and I think the first lesson learned and the first thing that I would like to emphasize is if you want to voice your opinion or disagreement, please follow the law and conduct a demonstration in accordance with the law. Let's be specific, specific about that. What does it mean to follow the law? Well, let's start up first is meet with the police and do the proper coordination as it's done elsewhere in Kosovo that says this is what we're going to do, here's where we're going to move, here's where we're going to basically uh, our activities. Fine. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, when barriers are put up and numerous announcements are made that do not tear down these barriers, here's your past to say, to say whatever you want to say, put whatever signs up, send whatever message you want to do. Uh, third, to not tear down the barriers, to not attack police, uh, and, and basically to follow the law, to, to have a peaceful demonstration where you can voice your opinions. And Next, what next. I learned. Next, what I learned. Fourth, wouldn't you say fourth, police shouldn't use rubber bullets? Let me, let me, let me finish. You, you're, 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 uh, you're getting ahead of me. The next thing I learned is this. I said as I, as I started to answer this question, this should have never happened. Um, clearly. Clearly, even in, even in the infancy of this investigation, clearly there should not have been two deaths as confirmed by the autopsies by rubber bullets. Should not have happened. Uh, and in the investigation, I will get great clarity of exactly how that occurred and why it occurred and by whom it occurred. And so I would wait for that investigation and would ask for some patience, uh, but we now have an investigation uh, that is being controlled by the Department of Justice, not the police. We have put our most aggressive and best prosecutor uh, in charge of this investigation. Well, uh, let's just define who's running that investigation exactly. It is a special prosecutor out of the Department of Justice. Not Deputy Commissioner. No, 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 no. This investigation has been moved out of the police department totally. Uh, with police resources, don't okay. get me wrong, so but only by the special prosecutor, Bob Dean. Bob Dean is, is as I said, our most aggressive, most thorough, most successful uh, prosecutor. He's been here quite a while, uh, and I have, and I, like I say, I meet him every day. So I think that is going very well. But, and, but, but let me go back to the question you asked, though. Okay. In its infancy, I would say we, we clearly had two deaths that should not have occurred. Certainly, the proper use of verbal bullets, people don't die. Certainly. Uh, thirdly, the investigation, uh, as directed, has to reveal why, how, and by by who, and that's that's we're still working that. And that's going to take some time. On that investigation, I would also tell you that everyone needs to understand a couple things. Take a typical incident in Kosovo where you have a police investigation, and I would ask the public to ask how long does that typically take to get done. And it's, how long does it take? Well, it, it, it's something of this scope, uh, but in, in a normal instance somewhere else, it could take three, four weeks. But some, peop some but, people but, say, we have heard UNMIC police often say that we're running an investigation about previous incidents, yeah. it, we never come up with anything. Yeah, what well, do you say to those skeptics? I'd say exactly what I say to the skeptics is that yesterday you had a decision taken by the SRSG that is not, that would be the fly in the face of the typical UNMIC reaction. Quite clearly. So I would tell you that that should show you the seriousness of how we're treating this incident. Mm -hmm. Name me the last time a police commissioner was asked to submit his resignation. It didn't happen after the March riots. I mean, so I, I think a, a very clear signal has been mm -hmm. sent. Okay. By all of them. Let me finish one more thing. Um, this is a very complex investigation. And let me tell you why it is. We had over 2,500 demonstrators. We had some chaos out there. We had K4. UNMIC and KPS, three large organizations, separate but large. Within UNMIC, 
three different nationalities. But some people say that's quite a small number of people to handle, actually. Right. You've handled a larger number of people without killing anyone. If that, that's not what your question. You asked me what the lessons learned. I told you already in, mm -hmm. the, in the first part of the answer, it should not have happened. It should not have happened. So tell me, is, is it still a prob problem for UNIF police, basically, that it has different cultural uh, barriers between different units and nationalities? I, I think, that, does that yeah, still I think you're referencing problem? some of the lessons learned, I think, from the March riots. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's premature to answer that question. Uh, until this investigation okay. is done, it's premature. But I'll also tell you, the investigation is being done by different nationalities that were involved in the, in the uh the incident from Saturday. And they did, that's also very important so, to know. Finally, to close this, can Kosovars ever protest again? Absolutely. Every single day. Can we every define this? Every single day. But let me, let me finish my answer. Yes, every day. But in a proper democratic way, in accordance with the law. But every single every democracy has, a, has the freedom to say and be heard. So if it comes to the point like it did, the scenario of if a protester pushes a police officer, what would a police whoa, 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 officer whoa, whoa, whoa. do back? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's just a protester pushes a... Yes, you... like it happened with Vizindosa. It is violence, but let's... No, 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 I no, 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 the, no, 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 no. The I'm not gonna, the police I'm not gonna let have. you get away with that. Uh, 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 it is much more drastic what occurred out there than a protester pushing a police officer. Uh, they were attacked with multiple instruments. Uh, things were torn down. Uh, Lorries were driven up to bust through the, uh, the and even Ben of Indosia, uh, although I don't agree with what they're saying, said, well, our intent was only to burn cars. I disagree. I think the intent was much larger than that. So what, let's, what was your let's intent? Not, what do you think? Uh, well, the investigation intent? will turn that up. You know, we have two investigations ongoing. Okay. We've been talking about the one and what the police did. We also have a very extensive investigation going on and what been did. I would like to talk about, about the political side of it with you. Uh, is there danger for a Hamas-like movement to be created here, and basic, basically a Bobby Sands type of syndrome. Yeah, okay. Um, interesting question, and, and, and let me answer that this way. First of all, let's put the Bobby Sands off to the side, because there's no comparison. Bobby Sands was in an environment where there was no potential future process. There was no hope. There was no process I'm going that said, we are going to go this way uh, after extensive international community involvement. Uh, and, and, and there was there was something that was happening in Vienna under Special Envoy Anasari that says we are going to go and move. There was a decision taken over a year ago that you're right, this isn't all about standards. We now have to go to status. And so there's been extensive work and great hope and great future for Kosovo. That's a fundamentally different environment than what Bobby Sands operated into. So let's dismiss that as a bad question. Mm -hmm. Good idea, but that question. Now let me go to the other, the but other side. But what do you say to those people who think that's not such a good deal after all? Well, let, I mean, let, that's let, what they think. Yeah, let me what spend some time on that because I think this is a very important message for all Kosovans. Look, um, we we talked about how demonstrations can occur every day, uh, but fundamentally, what we're dealing with now is a bit of a different issue. Uh, fundamentally, we have people uh, that are I wouldn't say necessarily comprise the whole of it of Indosia but are participating with Benjamin Dosia, who have the following agendas. And these are the same people that said NATO will never come to Kosovo. Same people. One, goal, we want the government to fail. Two, goal, we want the unity team no. to fail. They Three, want the government let me finish. to serve them. Yeah, let me the finish. The government haven't done so good. That, I, am, I disagree. Them, I disagree. According to them. I disagree. I'm talking about some anarchist elements that are part of this process right now. One, they want the government to fail. Not be better, but fail. Two, they want the unity team to They spoke to about fail. they want the government not to steal as well. I mean, do you, do you hear that part too? Two, hear? I'm going to answer this question whether you want me to or not. Two, they want the unity team to fail. Three, they want the process to fail. I have a problem with that. And, I don't, and if I'm sitting in Kosovo, uh, is that what we want? Is that what we want? Okay. So this small element is now having a fairly large impact. Can I as well just bring And I have great concerns about that. One, one of the protesters, I, if there might be anarchic elements, as you say, yeah. have been proven, but one of the protesters who was there and dis did not politically agree with Kursi but went out to check it out, this is what he said. It was like a turkey shoot because they shot at us so indiscriminately, I felt the police make terrorists from us all. I went to the demos just to check it out, and I was very undetermined, 
but I came home self-determined. What do you say to those people who have who been outraged because of the police uh, action? They simply have sympathies and want to join the police. And again, I, I, you know, I hate to say this, but I'll go back to the investigation where I find exactly what happened. But I also, and, I, and again, I'll say one more time. Mm -hmm. Two deaths should not have occurred in this in this uh, this tragedy. Uh, but at the same time, if you take the answer I just gave you, we are now mixing elements, quite frankly, that I think put Kosovo in a in a in a, in a bit of a dilemma. And I would say I would I would go so far as to say this too. I don't think these these organizations and people are unknown to the leadership of Kosovo. It's time for everybody to step up and say no. You want to demonstrate, you want to show your disbelief of the process, of the system, of the future of Kosovo, there are democratic ways to do that. And there are responsible ways to do that. This is not the way. To go back to your second point of how the results of the demonstration went, I can only tell you that it shouldn't have happened, and we're doing an extensive investigation. We've already taken some action, as we talked about earlier before the interview, and we've continued to take more action to find out what happened, who did it, and why. Let's go to the unity team. Basically, I want to ask you, um, the unity team has been constantly criticized for not giving enough information or not talking enough to the, uh, to the people. Uh, might this have caused a gap between basically the citizens and the unity team to the point that it's brought your mission to the duty of defending Kosovo institution from Kosovo people? I, uh, that's your conclusion, not mine. Look. Uh, here's how I would characterize that. You know I've spoken out in the past, a few months ago, about what I think should be happening in outreach and explaining uh, the SARS package. Has that happened? It's happening better now than it did when I was making those comments. And I'm encouraged by the But it plans. took a bit of violence yet for that to happen. No, 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 no. Violence had nothing to do or with Or misunderstanding. That. I mean, in a sense that... No, I'm going to answer your question because I don't agree with your, your conclusion. What I have outlined to you earlier is, look, in my mind, fundamentally, and let's recall, Ben mm -hmm. of back in April did what? They let air out of tires. I mean, they let air out of tires. They let air out of tires, they left a little note on the car. Somehow we went from that in a very democratic way. And what was the response to that? There was none. I mean, come on. Uh, and if you look at the last three, They've gotten very violent. And what I'm telling you, I'm going back to the answer I gave earlier. The gap between the unity team that may have been perceived and all of Kosovo's Can I is one issue. Well, there, and I there think issue being, about saying they, they claim that, um, that um, damaging property is not violence. What do you say to that? I think disagree, but let me go back and finish my answers because I think it's a good question you asked. And so if we're going to talk about a gap. I think the unity team is doing a much better job of getting all Kosovo's informed of what the proposal is about. Through what exactly? Uh, I mean, media campaign, uh, debates they're running. I mean, my God, they've had we've had four or five debates on, on all the uh, TV media where they're 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 sitting there and take. Throughout the year, Christina, we've Christina had two yesterday. debates well, we only. Disagree. We disagree. We've had two debates with all the unity. Teams. And we disagree. Is the, isn't that? But it's not. not too small? It's the unity team and the government also. There's everybody's working this. So I'm answering the question that says I think it's much better now than it was five six months ago. Why did but it I'm take go so back long to, for them to understand you? Think? I'm going to go back to the gap question. What I'm describing to you isn't about a gap, perceived or real, on the explanations of the unity team about. Adasari's proposal. That gap will never be fulfilled with the people that are, have sole design of bringing the government down, bringing down the unity team, and, uh, and ensuring that the proposal doesn't go forward. And again, it's the same people that said NATO would never come here. That gap, I don't think, can be filled through any rhetoric right now. Do you ever get the feeling that the Kosovo leaders need you and the American office to tell them what to do, no. and or to talk to their people, or to difficult, to the difficult ones too. Look, we're in a post-conflict environment right now. There's a reason Amig is still here. Do I think Amig needs to move on? Yes. Do I think the status has to change quickly? Yes. Are we in a very delicate period right now for Kosovo with respect to the future? Absolutely. My greatest fear is that we don't get control of ourselves, act in a responsible way, both on the UNMIC police through the investigation of the results of the disaster on Saturday, and certainly on how we want to demonstrate and show our differences in opinion in a democratic, rule of law way. We have to get a grip on this now. 
I'm very concerned that we, we just can't keep going the direction we're going. I would like to talk a little bit about uh, just uh, the procedure, the, the investigation itself. Can you tell us again who is in, investiga in the investigation, who is running it, yeah. and uh, basically when will we see the end of it? Well, I, I can tell you what comprises it, to tell you what, when the end will be, I think it's problematic, but I will tell you as soon as possible. Look, uh, SRSU made a very fundamental decision the other day. If you recall, uh, Stephen Curtis set this up within his uh, deputy police commissioner for crime, would run the investigation on what occurred on Saturday. He brought in the, uh, the auditor advisor uh, of the police structures, that is a Kosovar institution, it was a PIK, I believe, to, to observe and make sure there's a transparent investigation going on. I think when the SRC made the decision, let me finish, mm -hmm. to pull this out of the police was a very, very good decision. But it's still in UNMIC. Yes. Department of Justice yeah. is UNMIC's yeah. Uh, yeah. Department of Justice. I, I don't have a problem with that. Do you? Why, do, why isn't the team brought in from New York or Geneva to investigate How long do you want? Well, we, we could certainly approach doing that. Now I'm going to ask you the next question. When do you want this investigation over? There's no free lunch when you start when you start building other structures to come in. Fundamentally, I say if you if we're done with this investigation, Who if we're done with this investigation, group? what are other cost of institutions that basically can can check that that we have, is we a have, credible? We have the institution that was designed to do just that. That's what they're doing. It is an outside agency, separate from the government, separate from UNMIC, that has the sole purpose with its team of investigators Which one? to ensure. I think it's called PIK. I'll find a name for you. I, yeah, but what about, uh, you know, civil society or ombudsman office or they're, they're, anyone else involved? Well, they're all involved right now. Every day we get uh, issues from the ombudsman and everybody else. Look, I'm telling you this. Now, I'm going to finish the answer that to that this question. Is, that I'm telling you that right now, with. right what now. What measures have you ensured that that investigation yeah. will not finally be politically meddled with? Uh, here's the assurances I give. I have taken the very best, most aggressive special prosecutor we have. We have pulled it out of the police and put it under his control in the justice side. Uh, we have, we're receiving technical assistance now from some of the nations in Europe is to augment the technical capacity of the police department in this investigation. And I will tell you that no one, whether myself, the SRSG, the Department of Justice, uh, or anyone else in Kosovo that wants this to be done as fast and as accurately as possible. Was the was, was the resignation of Interior Minister appropriate, according to you? I have great respect for uh, Fet Mirachev. Um, I got to know him very well in his, in his post. I think he handled it with great dignity. I think he handled it with sincere emotion. Uh, I think he took a very tough decision on his own. And I think he made a very powerful statement. Uh, but he was not running the operation. Why should sh he have resigned? Do you well, think you have to ask Fet Mirachev mm -hmm. that. Uh, you Did asked that, me okay. what, what I thought, and he gave you the answer. That's 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 something he'll. Did have that to push for? Uh, was that a pressure to ask for Cortez's resignation too? No, no, not not uh, from my perspective. The answer is no. But uh, 24 hours before he resigned, you said he was doing a good job. You changed your mind. Yeah, I did change my mind. I gave an answer to that yesterday. Uh, yesterday, the answer I gave when asked that very same question was why did you tell us the day before that he's doing fine and then the next day he's fired? He's, his, his resignation was uh, tendered. And my answer will be the same answer I gave yesterday was, look, it would be irresponsible, irresponsible of me to, to talk about what we're doing on a very delicate issue prior to that being decided and done. Okay, uh, in the issue of days that have passed and how things have moved, basically uh, the concern is that if it took you uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to admit something as simple as rubber bullets, which was in front of our eyes, which was in the filming, which was cartridges on the street, yeah. every organization has now yeah. leftovers from that. If it took you four days to admit something so obvious, how long will it take you basically to admit whatever other wrongs went in that That'll day. be based on investigation, but I'll also tell you that was one of the rationale and one of the reasons we have for some of the decisions we've taken is we weren't getting the information. That's why we changed the whole structure of this, and I think it'll be much better. What information? And to give you information just like you described, we agree, I agree, it took way too long for that to come out. And I think if you, look, if you look at the events of the last few days, I think you'll come to your own conclusion of how we decided to move ahead.
We have a new police commissioner acting. We have a new structure for the investigation. Uh, what sort of qualities will you be looking in the next police commissioner? Will there be a next police commissioner? Uh, well, we're working that. And it's premature for me to say who or what it's going to be. But we're working that with New York. We're working that with the European Union. Uh, and we're working in as fast as we can. And I would just tell you, with great experience, is what we're looking for. We know that Kai Vitrup was hired because of his public order experience. Yeah. Why was Curtis hired? Can we know uh, his background? Yeah, his background is extensive. I mean, he has done every single job imaginable in the United Kingdom, uh, in the police department there. Great experience. Mm. Uh, so, what, uh, just um, as well to give a little bit of view of how has... Uh, Will the future relation be between the uh, Interior Ministry and maybe a future planning of, of these operations? Pre -status, Will they be pre-status pre -status or post-status? Uh, in the next few months, let's say. I mean, it's pretty urgent. Yeah. I want to know, yeah. in the next few months, uh, yeah. will you consider more involvement of the Interior Ministry, more involvement of KPS I, in the planning yeah. of these operations? The KPS is intimately involved in the planning of these operations. They say they have not. Uh, it's Behind involved. the scenes, they uh, have not been involved I've, I've, in the planning of this operation. Do you want to answer the question you want me to? I mean, you, No, I, but you, this is what they are saying I, to I, us. And I disagree with that. They're intimately involved in the planning and execution of these operations. To go to your question on, on the involvement of the Ministry of the Interior, there were other issues uh, within the relationships that were, that were in the background with the Minister of Interior, Elmick and KPS. My answer to that question is I think the Minister of Interior needs to be intimately involved. Mm. So you would like to see it in the future be more intimate? Intimately involved, involved. Would you? absolutely. Okay, uh, final question. We've asked through our correspondence in Romania of our organization, we've asked the Interior Ministry of Romania whether of their, their basically uh, rules of engagement in using rubber bullets. And they say that uh, they have different rules for their domestic place and different for Kosovo, which they consider a war zone. Do you consider Kosovo a war zone? Yeah, first of all, I don't have the same information you have. Okay. I consider Kosovo, Do you consider Kosovo a, a war zone. Absolutely not. A very late post conflict environment that's ready to move to the next step. And Do for the status to change, uh, for the status to change, uh, for this resolution to get to New York City as fast as possible and move on and for UNMIC to leave and for the EU to come in with a, a much smaller mission. That's where I think we are. Can you, can you just give our audience an idea where these internationals come to Kosovo? Do they come with these ideas? We just want to understand. Do they come with these uh, basically uh, judgments of Kosovo that, that it is a war zone when they come from their countries? I, you know, I, How do they come? With I, what idea yeah, of Kosovo? I, you know, first of all, there's a, there's a training requirement for everybody who's continuous to come. And there's part of that training requirement is to understand the environment they're going into. Mm -hmm. I don't know where you got your information. I don't know who you're talking to. I don't share that opinion. But certainly, as part of our investigation, uh, we'll see if that is, in fact, true. Thank you very much. Thank you. I've enjoyed it.